I'm Stephanie Patton, and this is another episode of United for a Healthy Stoughton. Today we are at the District Attorney's Basketball Camp here at Stoughton High School. This camp is offered twice a year by um, District Attorney Michael Morrissey in collaboration with the Stoughton Recreation Department and the Stoughton Public Schools who host um, them in this space. It's a really great opportunity for our local kids to learn some basketball skills from some great local experts here, as well as some life skills and learning about making good choices from a number of speakers and folks that the district attorney brings in to talk to them. So we have, um, we've been having a great time here today. We're excited to show you some of what's been happening and um, we hope you enjoy the show. Attorney Michael Morrissey um, here at the basketball camp and I would love for the district attorney to tell us a little bit about the camp and why it's important to you, why you sponsor this well, every year. Thanks Stephanie. Um, you know we do a lot of work together in Stoughton to educate people about drugs and alcohol. We work with Oasis, we work with the school department, the recreation department, um, the police department yep. and the sheriff's office. So the camp lets us get a lot of our community partners together uh, to educate young kids especially about illegal drug use, alcohol, substance abuse issues, and to uh, tell kids how uh, the decisions they make on a basketball court, the friendships they make, can really have a difference in their lives going forward. When you're out on the basketball court, you've got to talk to each other. You've got to know when to pass the ball, when to shoot the ball. You've got to know when the open man is. How do you communicate? Well, you may say, hey, over here, or it may be just by looking around what's going on around you. You know what to do because you learn that. And we think that you can be taught to make good decisions. If you see something that going on that you don't think is right, have the courage to stand up and say, hey, we can't do that. You know, we're gonna get in trouble. It's gonna be a bad result. Someone's gonna get hurt. And if you guys can do that, you can really make a big difference. Stoughton's a great community and we don't wanna lose any kids. And you guys are the future. If you can start, you know, if you start to appreciate how important it is to say no to drugs, not to use illegal drugs and, and uh, alcohol, that's really important. And so we anticipate that we're going to keep doing this fabulous program year after year here well, with you, right? Well, I'm going to run right? for re so as long as I'm around, we're going to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, but I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to, to you and the people of Stone because uh, we do take some of the drug money that we take from the bad guys and mm -hmm. use it for education prevention. The schools are really good and the recreation to help us support this program. But it gets, I mean, there's 50, 60 kids here, which yep. is... You know, an awesome amount, and uh, my Stoughton colors on. Or yeah, like, absolutely. You yeah. I don't, I know, I don't have black, my Stoughton colors today. You're halfway there. So. Right, right. This school is brings back great memories for me. I spent four years playing athletics in this gymnasium, walking these halls. I walk in here every time, and I have great memories of, of my high school career. Uh, I've got to play on some great sports teams. But I would say that playing athletics brought me to a place where I made good decisions. I learned teamwork. And all of those skills that I learned as being a teammate, a good teammate, sportsmanship has helped me in every aspect of my life. Uh, growing up as a young student, going into college, playing athletics, teaching and learning the, the value of sportsmanship and helping others and being a part of a team has helped me in my career throughout um, my entire adult life. So I'm here with Coach Carl, who is has been working at the basketball camp for how many years now? Uh, we are officially in our eighth year since uh, 2010. Excellent. Yep. So can you tell us a little bit about the background of this camp? And well, it's a great opportunity for you know to really combine with Stoughton Recreation to run an opportunity for kids to have a real positive things to do: learn basketball, uh, talk about goals things they want to accomplish over the next year. Talk about being just good kids. Yep. Making good decisions in life and partnering with the DA's office is obviously helping that. I try to work it whenever I can. If right. I have the time, I'm here. I love doing it. Awesome. Love coming here this morning, so. That's terrific. All and so you things. guys run the campus three days, three mornings, Three mornings, right? yep. Uh, nine to noon, three mornings. Uh, we give them a little bit of 
of life skills, learning about being uh, good teammates, making good decisions, and then we give them a lot of basketball, and importantly, we let them have fun. Hi, I'm Isabel Belmonte, and I'm nine years old, and my favorite part about this camp is I like to do the challenges. I like to do like the layups, see who can do the most shots, and I like to run around and play with the older kids. Hi, my name's Anthony Alessi, and I'm nine years old, and I've been to this camp a couple years now. My favorite part is the games, and I've learned a lot of stuff, and it's really helping me at basketball. I've learned to dribble through the legs, um, work on my left hand. Um, I've been, sh be been able to shoot better and do all the dribbling moves. Hi, I'm Ava Sabati. I'm 11 years old, and this is my first year at camp. And I really liked yesterday when Paul Collins brought in the drug dogs and gave us a demonstration of how they work. Morning, guys. How are we? My name's Paul Collins. I work for the Sheriff's Office. I've been there for about 20 years. I've had two years working with Ico. He's my canine. He's a, um, almost a full-bred lab. He's got a little bit of... Um, chipping in him. Well, Iko has never eaten out of a bowl since I've had him. He's fed out of my hand every single day. I have to train him every single day to eat. The only time he gets fed is when he finds drugs. So I have to hide him every day, I have to drill him every day, and when he finds the drugs, what I do is I give him his reward for finding the drugs. Okay, the dog learns over the years of, of the weeks of training that the only time he's going to get fed is when he finds something. So when I have a day off, unfortunately, he still has to work and I do have to drill him at home. So technically, I really don't have a day off. I have to feed him every single day. If he doesn't, for some reason, find the drugs in that day, because dogs are just like people sometimes, they have good days and they have bad days, then I might not feed him in the morning and we'll try it again in the afternoon. And usually he learns pretty quick then I gotta find it this time or I might not get fed today. Now at home, he's just like a regular pet at home. My kids love him, I have another dog. That dog, yeah, he's a little older, he's, he tolerates him. They don't fight, but he tolerates him. Um, my wife loves him, everybody, he's just around the house, he just roams around, he's like a normal dog. He'll chew shoes up, shoes up if he gets his chance to get on them. But other than that, just a normal dog at home. Right, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, do a, I'm gonna do a demonstration. I'll explain to you how he finds the drugs, just so you guys understand. He works at the jail. That's my main job. We deal with inmates coming back from court. We deal with new commits coming in. They need to be checked to make sure they're not trying to smuggle drugs in. So when I see an inmate, this is no good. I can't have him jumping out. So, enough. I can't have him jumping on people. Occasionally he'll do it, but I gotta put a stop to it real quick because we don't want the inmates complaining that the dog might have hurt him or something. All right, so what I'll tell the inmates is, guys and girls, my dog does not bite. He is gonna sniff you, he might hit you with his nose, he might touch you with his paw, but he does not bite. Now what I do now is I give him a quick treat to let him know and I apply this collar, that's his working collar. Now he knows he's working. And I'll do something just called the cursory search. I just walk around, he'll start searching. If he finds it, great. If he doesn't, it's just a cursory. And boom, see how he went down? That's him fine. Now he's gonna start looking at me. Stay right where you are, sir. You're gonna look at me in a second to see whether I notice it. And I'll step towards him to let him know that, hey, now that's him saying, feed me, feed me. Now he found it, see? Now we call that passive alert detection. Okay, does anybody know what that means? Passive alert? It means he's not supposed to scratch, even though he did. He only scratched because he was getting impatient with me. But what they do is they sit very calmly and they let me know, hey, it's right here, Dad, it's right here. Because dogs can't talk, they can't tell me it's right here, and we don't want them barking. So he sits down on it, or lies down if it's low. If that was up in his pocket up here, he would have sat. This has become one of the staples of our summer programming, um, and I, I just have to mention uh, the cooperation of the district attorney, Mike Morrissey's office. Uh, in particular, 
Um, a guy who likes to work behind the scenes, uh, Paul Wilder. Uh, he's a Stoughton guy, Stoughton family. Um, and working with him uh, makes uh, putting the clinic together pretty easy. Um, and it's really been a tremendous success. Just a great way to combine values and athletics with, uh, with great teamwork and with great coaches. This clinic over the years has grown. Uh, we've seen in numbers year after year. All of our registration is online on our website, stotenrec.org, uh, where you can view this clinic as well as many other ones that we're doing, along with summer programs and year-round programs that we have, um, ranging every single season. I hope that um, one of the things that you'll take away from this camp is the importance of getting involved in, in good events like this and participating and getting to hang out with some friends and meet new people and um, participate in sports or clubs or activities. It's so important. It makes high school and life just so much more enjoyable and fulfilling. So my message to you today is to uh, set your goals. Don't give up on your goals if things change and you'll reach your dream. And a companion to having goals, I believe a companion piece, is teamwork and character. Now, greatness and skill and talent such as you saw exhibited by some of our Stoughton High graduates who play basketball down there, these great guys down there who can really play and dunk. I could never touch a backboard myself. Um, greatness, that makes, that's fun and that wins games and that is tremendous. That is tremendous. What is also very important is character, being a good teammate, being loyal to your teammates, working hard, not letting the people down you play with, and trying your very best and making everybody proud of you, and being honest and supportive of your teammates. But if you want to play sports at Stoughton High School in this wonderful athletic department, if you want to play for Stoughton High, well, yeah, sure, you got to get better as a player, but you also have to do your job in the classroom. That's my number one message for you today. So I'm here with Coach Galvin, who is the Stoughton High basketball coach, and um, he's been working at this camp for a number of years. So tell us how long you've been doing this coach and uh, what, what you love about this program. Well, uh, I've been the varsity boys coach for 15 years, and um, I don't know how many years this camp goes back, but uh, it's a great opportunity every year, twice a year, actually, because they do it in February mm -hmm. as well. Yep. It's a great opportunity for our current players to interact with what could be our future players. Mm -hmm. And even today, when you look out in the gym behind us, there are some of our former players who are right. here uh, working as well. So it's a nice... Uh, intermixing of the, the future, the present, and the past. So Terrific. It's, a, it's a great opportunity for us. Oh, and, good. Uh, Maybe you can recruit some new, uh, well, right, some new players for the future. It, it's mm -hmm. nice for them to, you know, obviously they're having fun here, but right. it's nice for them to, to see how much work goes into right. turning yourself into a real good player. Yep. Joe graduated from Stoughton High School in the year 2013. Joe was a ninth grader playing on the ninth grade basketball team, the freshman team. And at the end of the year, he got called up to varsity. And he played in his first varsity game. You remember that, Joe? You were terrified. It was at Walpole. But Joe worked hard. And Joe made himself into a good high school player. And then he left here. He went to college. He went to work. And maybe you saw him on TV this year. Anybody see Joe on TV this year? What was it for? Dunking. Dunking. Dunking the basketball. How many of you have seen Joe on TV? Have you seen Joe dunk the basketball? No. <laughs> We're lucky. You're lucky. I shouldn't say I'm lucky. I'm lucky because I got to work with these guys for years. You're lucky that you got to work with them this week, but you've met Joe, right? Right? Aaron, come up here. Now, here's the thing. I like to tease Aaron because he's kind of in love with himself. You know, I like to tease him a little bit, but I don't know if you guys know this, but if you look around this gym, you can see Aaron's name. Now, here's the thing. If you look at that banner, it's not a big 
list of names. But all of those players, boys and girls, have scored at least 1,000 points. And what all of them have in common except Aaron is that Aaron did that in three years. And everybody else did it in four years. So when you look at those numbers up there, points scored. As much as I like to make fun of Aaron, give him a hard time, I would say that all the things he accomplished here at Stoughton High School as a basketball player, that was probably the least important thing to him. Scoring was never his number one thing. I made him score sometimes, because we needed him to, but he was a passer first and a scorer second. Unlike Joe, who never passed. <laughs> Joe never really passed the ball. Now, why do I tell you this? Because Aaron came here as a ninth grader and had worked so hard at his game that when he was a ninth grader, he didn't play on the freshman team. He didn't play on the JV team, the junior varsity. Came right up to the varsity team, and he started. So in ninth grade, how old were you in ninth grade? 14, 14 years old. He was playing varsity basketball every Tuesday and Friday night in this gym, packed bleachers, sold out games, state tournament games as a ninth grader. Ashley, come up here. You guys know Ashley? Yeah. All right. Unfortunately, I never had the opportunity to coach Ashley, but because I work here and because the boys basketball team and the girls basketball team, we share the same gym, we see each other a lot, and I know that Ashley was a very successful basketball player here at Stoughton High School, but more importantly, she's a very successful college student. She's going to graduate from college next year. She's going to start her career. And some of the things that have made her successful in college, she learned as a basketball player. And you played some other sports, right? Yeah. Like volleyball. volleyball. She learned it all in basketball. She didn't learn anything in volleyball. All right? But you guys... You guys have an opportunity to learn from them and all of their successes on the court, in the classroom, in college. So I'm Ashley Medeiros. I graduated from Stoughton High in 2014. I played basketball here for all four years. I then went to Bridgewater State and played basketball there for one year. I'm currently interning at the DA's office in Quincy for victim advocacy. I volunteer at this camp often, every couple years, because I think they teach um, great life skills, teamwork and everything. When I did camps as a little kid, I didn't think it would help me in the real world growing up, but at my internship now, like teamwork and communicating is actually a huge part of it. So every lesson you learn here actually will take you a long way in life. I want you guys to pick their brains. I want you people to ask them questions so that by them answering you, it will help you to become a better player or a better student or a better person. Joe, how, 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 how many dunks do you think you could do in a day? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so the question is, how many dunks could Joe do in a day? The answer for Aaron is zero. But Joe? Um, well, with me, it depends because sometimes, you know, on days when I don't work, I'll go to the gym at 9 o'clock in the morning, and, um, like, sometimes I'll stay there until 4 o'clock, and so probably about 500 dunks a day if it's, if it's a good day and if my legs are feeling good, but yeah. 500 dunks in a day. Did you guys hear that? 500 dunks in a day. All right, we've got a question over here from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Ashley, what is your career going to be? Ashley, what is your career going to be? I'm doing, I'm getting a lot of steps in here. 
Well, my major is criminal justice, and I'm leaning towards being a probation officer. Anybody know what probation is? Good. Um, Joe, when did, when did you first decide decided when you liked bat when you were good at basketball? When you when you were. I don't know if we've decided that yet. Yeah, I don't think I'm that good, but you know, <laughs> I think when, when I was about three years old, this is when, before I was adopted and stuff like that, I lived in Springfield, and then down the street by my grandmother's house, I used to play basketball with my father, and then I think playing basketball with him all the time, that's when I fell in love with the game, and then growing up, I always had a love for the game, and I kept playing it as I got older, so I always had a passion for it, so I come here all the time because I want to share my passion with the game with you kids and everything. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough to keep dunking and stuff like that because, you know, I love that's, basketball. That's a great answer, Joe. <laughs> great answer. Uh, my name is Joseph Bunch Brennan. Um, I graduated Stone High School, um, class of 2013. And I think I started doing this camp uh, 2011. And I um, always enjoy coming back because, you know, I love the game of basketball. And I went to Stone High School, and um, I just love um, helping others out, you know, educating the children about the game. And I, I love being a role model for the younger generation of kids, you know helping them go on the right path with the, with the future. I know not all of them can play basketball, so you, you just have to preach that. If you just work hard, you know, follow the rules, and with life and everything, you'll make it and follow your dreams. My name is Joseph McSweeney. I'm 11. I've been coming to camp around three or four years. My favorite part is watching one of the um, counselors here named Joe Dunk. Hi, I'm Cole Sabati, and I, this is my first year here. And my favorite part of coming here is when we get to scrimmage. Hi, my name is Timothy Sullivan, and this is my first year at this camp, and I love it. My dad is a state trooper, and I know a lot of people here, like Coach Wilder and Mr. Morrissey. My favorite part of this camp is all, the clin all of the clinics that we do and all the practicing. I love basketball so much. I really want to come back here next year. So thanks again for watching. I'd like to thank the district attorney, Michael Morrissey, and his staff here at the basketball camp. I'd like to thank the Stoughton Parks and Recreation Department for co-hosting this program. If you have young students at home, children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews who are interested in playing basketball here at the camp, watch the Stoughton Recreation Department website for information on sign-ups.